I've seen so many investors take a five or ten thousand dollar project and turn it into a thirty thousand dollar loss, all because they hired the wrong person, and all the red flags were there, but they ignored them. What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Invest Iowa. Today we have the Home Life Brothers, and I have Ryan with me. That we're going to talk about contractors. Um, why hiring the war, the wrong contractor will cost you tons in the long run and how investors think that they know everything, but <laughs> turns out it's not the case. Sometimes. Thank you, thank you for coming, man. I appreciate you having me. Yeah. Okay. So let's, let's dig in a little bit of how do you get into the contractor world? How I specifically, or just in general? Just, just in general. Sure. Um, it usually starts off small. So I was a full-time employee, W-2 job and um, had always done side work and I think that's where most people start is kind of doing some side work or working for somebody else or kind of on a part-time basis or maybe with their parents, um, you know, working with dad out in the woodshed, um, fixing things and what we, I really saw was just the opportunity that's out there to use my hands, get in and get dirty and earn, earn a buck. Um, so that's where I came from. That's where you came from, but how do, so from that point to growing your company to what it is now, like how long, how long was it? What did it take to get there? Sure. So it goes back to what we thought would be doing a lot of odd jobs, taking a lot of time to really build a company, uh, a name out there a year or two years where I thought I was going to be changing vanities out, some toilets. I thought I was going to change a lot of hundred toilets a year. Um, and what we realized was the need is out there so much for a quality contractor or somebody that can handle a project that almost immediately from quitting our jobs, we were landing contracts to either flip houses or doing all new kitchens um, because the need was so prevalent in the area. Did you start this when there was a COVID boom? So we, we caught the tail end of it. We started officially started in August of 2021. Um, which was, we were still in the middle of it, but we caught the, like the last year, you know, things kind of started to calm down last fall, um, you could say. So we caught the, the very last year of the, the COVID boom. Um, and I think that's where we saw, even before we quit our jobs, that there was the need out there because we had rental property, we had a flip going, couldn't find anybody to work on our properties that were going to do an honest, honest job for a fair price and said, well, why don't we just do this? So. Do you see do you see a difference between like do you get projects from investors you get price for and projects for retail right what what are the biggest difference so um, that took some evolution to, re to really us to figure out at first we kind of saw them as the same thing it's just I'm gonna take something that's broken and fix it um, but they really are two different beasts um, especially within the investor and kind of how we handle investor or flips or rehabs whatever you want to call them that we take a product that's subpar, we kind of have a package and a process put together for making it a finished product, whether it's going to be a flip or for a rental. Um, so the difference is through the process of the job. We're using pretty standard materials on all flips, all rehabs, for the most part, the same product at the end, where a retail customer, we're going to customize that along the way. So there's a lot of back and forth, a lot of planning, a lot of um, adjustments along the way because we might have a tile picked out somebody wants to go with a different one they didn't like it um, whereas investor we take the keys once they've purchased the property or the tenants moved out and we do our work and we give them the keys back there's not a lot of back and forth unless there's some major issues found out what do investors care about the return on their money <laughs> so and, th and that's multifaceted so um, like any equation it's how little can I spend for the most return? So there's, how can we cut cost to save us on the expense side to maximize the return for whatever they're going to do? Uh, you know, if they're going to flip that property, you know, what's the biggest ROI on what I can list it or the ARV? Um, once that house is done, how much can I sell it for? Uh, same with a, a apartment turn or even a, a burr. So you're going to buy a rundown house, fix it all up and rent it out, then refinance it. What's the most rent I can get out of this property so I can refinance out and get my either all my money back or as much money as possible back and s carry a high high rent. Do you find um, in the real estate world uh, more attracted to c 
contracting work or more towards real estate work? So a little bit of both. So in going back to a little bit of the story is we thought when we quit our jobs, we would be spending a lot of time in the real estate world and not doing flips for other people, but we thought we would be flipping our own houses. We thought we would be the landlords. Um, we thought we were going to be in that world a lot more. But what we found is the need was so much more for contracting and we could make so much more doing the contracting that that's where we flipped our focus. Um, Going back to what you were saying, um, when did, how long did it take you to realize that, that real estate was not necessarily what you wanted to aim? It's more like contractor, as at least for now. Sure. Um, six months. We found out pretty quick. Um, in that time, we had already had uh, a duplex flipping a house. Um, that fall, I believe it was, I don't remember, 2021, would have been November of 2021. I think, uh, purchased a quadplex. Um, and then we haven't, since then we haven't bought a single piece of property. It's all been, uh, for other people. And especially within flipping a house, if we're going to flip a house, that person's already purchased the house. They've taken on all the risk of the market. The only risk we have in is not delivering a product and worst case scenario, somebody doesn't pay at the end, but all along the way, we've got our, our margin cooked in there to how much we're going to make. And it might be lower, a little bit less, and we're going to put in a lot more work than the investor is going to. You know, their, their, their work is signing the paperwork and handing us the keys, listing with, a, with an agent. We're going to do all the work in between, but we have zero risk in there. And we can do three, four, five at a time. Whereas if we were investing ourselves, we could, if we had a bigger bankroll, we could sure do a heck of a lot more. But, you know, especially at the start, we're going to be able to do one or two at most. Um, and so instead we can maximize that on our time use and do it for other people and just focus on that so for from your end how do you save people money when they would they contract you saving people money on the fact that investors when, investors. In, investors yep 100 percent is we went on the model of <clears throat> you, know, you might see this different in a retail customer Retail customers are going to want that full price breakdown of literally every item down to the two by four, what's going to be used. And that's what they're going to be charged. For the most part, we're averaging out what it's going to cost to flip this house, whether it's we're basing stuff on square footage or just your average kitchen or what, here's what we can do a bathroom for. And all along the way, we're going to try to save money as much as possible, either re by reusing things that are currently there or maybe we have spare stuff that we're going to use and can kind of go into that. But we're going to give a, if we say the flip is going to cost you $35,000, when we hand those keys back, we're collecting a check for $35,000. Not $55,000, not $85,000, it's going to be $35,000. Um, so one, there's a benefit in the fact that when you run your numbers, that's what it's going to be. There is no crazy um, scenario where that's not the case. Uh, the next part is, like I was just saying, if we're going to do a bathroom for a set dollar amount, we're going to try to find the most economical way to do that and still deliver a quality product. Is, is it going to be a $2,000 vanity? No, because it's not worth it. Is it going to be a less expensive Menards um, cheap vanity? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but for the most part, either renters or the homeowner that's going to be seeing that and purchasing it, it's not going to change what they're willing to pay. Mm, okay. Do investors think that they know? contracting work do you have problems with that or are more they hands off um so initially especially initially when we were doing this we didn't we were willing to take on any job we wanted or could get and it was happy to take that job we were blown away that anybody would even trust us to do that as of let's just say as of today we do not we won't do a contract if we know that person is going to be involved through the process or they're going to be paying retail rates, you know, for what we can do to flip a property. We both, we want, and we would hope that the client wants. And I think for the most part, most clients that we have now want that experience where they don't have to come out and double check on us or need to be out three times a week just to make sure we're even there. Um, they want to hand us the keys, say, have fun. And we'll see you in three months. And then they get, come back in three months, cut us a check. They get to go collect their check. Um, and I think it works out well for everybody. Mm, okay. But as far as what, um, what they know, yeah. I mean, we've had those clients that um, want to be involved just like it's their own personal bathroom. You don't like those? Um, it's not that we don't like them, but 
Uh, it's hard to work like when, that. I mean, admittedly, when we're doing any investing um, client, our margins are very low. Uh, we're not collecting what would be considered full retail rate for our work. Now, how do we recoup that? One, using basic material or saving anywhere we can, as well as spending as little time on the process of flipping the house as possible. And that could be from simply, I mean, the hours that it would take. I mean, you think about flipping an entire house with a, a kitchen, two bathrooms, flooring throughout the whole place. I mean, legitimately, we could sit down with a, a client that we're doing that for for eight hours and go through every little piece, what this trim is going to be, what these doorknobs are going to look like. Instead, we're able to cut that out because we have a package, we have a process. So we can just go in and do instead of waiting for decisions to be made, waiting for whatever it may be. It cuts out a lot of the time, labor that's it's not, when you think of labor, I think of man hour labor and how much time am I going to spend preparing this, pro, uh, this project before we even start. For the most part, if you had a flip today, you could hand me the keys and we could start tomorrow because we know what process, we have that hammered down. Um, we're streamlining it at all times, trying to make it a, a smooth process for everybody that makes most people money. Because that's And that's the whole goal too, is we want to make our client money because if they make money, guess what? We're coming back again. We're, we're doing that whole process all over. And it's kind of the, it's almost like the Walmart approach, sell in bulk. And so when we're doing house flips or anything like that, it's how can we sell that in bulk? How is, so, so far is going good. So Fantastic. contractor keep, just keeps coming your way. Right? Somehow. Is that, is that for contractors? The In general? In general. So for the ones that have it figured out or can handle the business, I think it's a common problem in contracting is you're a great electrician. You're a great plumber. You're a great carpenter. Um, you're good at your skill. But contracting is a business. And you have to understand business to be successful. You could be the literally the greatest carpenter there ever was, but if you don't know how to talk to people, how to put yourself out there, how to manage your money correctly, I mean, there's money coming in, money going out all the time, um, you're going to fail. And we see it all the time. I mean, we get contacted all the time about, should we call them just guys or whatever that have their own business, but either can't find work or just don't like the whole opportunity or the whole business of going out to find that work going out to bid the job, speaking with customers along the way. They would rather just work, which is great. So then we take them in um, or try them out, and we go out and do, get the jobs and allow them to do the work because that's what they're good at. I'm good at running the business. Everybody stays in their lanes, and that's what we talk about going back to doing the, the flips is how do we get those processes hammered down that everybody's working efficiently and every hour is being put to good use and then getting the best quality product possible. What are some challenges in the future for contracting work? In general? Yes. Um, so prices have come down on material. So that's that was one of the killers for over the last couple of years. It was very, you know, if we're bidding a job, it was very expensive to the client. Um, so, boy, in the future, I, I mean, this might sound silly, but I don't think there are any problems. Like, if, <laughs> you'd have to find a problem. I, it's so easy. I mean, tomorrow you can go submit your application online, pay $50. You are now a general contractor in the state of Iowa. All you have to do is get out there and work. So would could the economy go down? Yes. Does that affect me? I would like to say no because we're going to be able to we – we've built a name for ourselves. We have the ability to continue. Hopefully – I mean, not hopefully. It sounds terrible, but – I would hope that other people fail, not me. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, a it, it's a business. It's a business. It's a business. It is. But um, I think you saw that with uh, with realtors, with with anybody in the investing. Uh, let's use it investing world. Interest rates went sky high last fall. Who stopped buying houses? People who were not good at it, or who were operating on tiny margins, or had a business model that was only based on a low interest rate market. People who are still buying today or who continue to buy were the people who set processes up, had a true real estate business, and just kept operating their business model. That's and, and that's relevant and that stays the same for all the fields I th throughout real estate. Hundred percent agree. Yeah. How do you so do you work with real estate agents? Uh no. No. 
Not really. Is that something that you're going to plan to do in the future? So or is, that, is that not necessary for so, No. So uh, at the very beginning, we did. We, you know, again, going back to how we started wanting to do or thinking we had to do, just do handyman stuff, get our name out there. So we contacted real estate agents. Uh, obviously, they have a referral basis as well as when somebody's house is under contract and an inspection comes back that XYZ needs to be changed, they need somebody to do it now. Yeah. Um, the trouble with that was we weren't able always to do it now. Um, and sometimes... Wait, was, so, so, so the answer is yes, you do work with realtors. Not really anymore. Be and because... But not for that relationship? Is that relationship not what you're looking for? Yes and no. Obviously, I want a, a realtor yourself or uh, whoever it may be is a great referral source. Right. What we found or what we initially tried to do was find those quick fixes. We, th you know, we wanted to be handyman at first. Um, and it was tough because, again, going back to when they go to sell a house and it's under contract, well, it's missing a railing. Well, does that customer want a nice railing put in or just something, a two by four slapped up to pass inspection? That was not the work we wanted to be in. Mm, okay. Okay. So, um, realtors are no longer. I I feel like I feel like I, I I'm trying to get an answer from you, but you're not giving it to me. <laughs> <laughs> so, for realtor, are realtors not a good source of networking in general for you? I think I. So, like I said, as far as the referral source, because of the handyman, the handyman aside, big projects, right? You, you're talking that you're no longer doing this like basic so, job you're taking upon hire let's, let's just pull a word out of there do i want to work with realtors generally no because we're not at this point we're not so much handymen anymore we are general contracts do i want to network and referral and talk with realtors absolutely okay that that answers the question right. that that that's a lot better when, when i think working for it's it's literally we've i mean we've done tons of work where whatever realtor has sold a house and they're the ones facilitating everything Um, and we're coming out and doing the work, and it usually gets paid out of escrow. Um, that, so that type of working for is no, but yeah, as far as networking and getting out and meeting, um, you know, you'll see me around multiple meetups, multiple um, networking events. So how do, you, how do you promote your business as a contractor? How do you go from that handyman to now being a reputable? So call, doing the work, doing what we say. I mean, I, I think anybody that's, probably even watching this is going to relate to or had an instance where contractor didn't do what they said. And we're not perfect either, but having that ability or reputa reputation is everything. If I botch a bunch of jobs, nobody's going to call me. Or if they do, they're going to find out and fire me. So anytime we have a job where things are going poorly, we're going to do the best to fix it so that our reputation is not tainted whether that's a financial or just extra work, whatever it may be, we're going to take care of that issue because reputation is everything. In regards to systems, what systems have you implemented so to, take, to go from handyman to construction services? A lot. Um, that, I mean, we have spent, just this year, we spent a lot of money investing in software because uh, now we, it used to be a whiteboard or a piece of paper. I've got this project, this person going here, I need to order these things. Um, we've invested heavily into software, even to where clients have a, client portal so they can communicate because com uh, communication can become kind of the lost the lost thing when you're super busy the last thing you want to do is make phone calls and communicate everybody as to what's going on especially if things you know it's contracting things go bad change all um, the time change all the time you're we're, you know we're problem solvers half the time um processes so now that the team's growing um where we have multiple project managers salesperson that Everything needs to be communicated through, you know, we have, we've put in process flows. We've sat down as a team, um, you know, described roles, put that in for everybody um, from literally the start of how we obtain a client to how do we finish with that client and then even follow up afterwards. Is obtaining a client hard for a contractor? I would say no. Can you go out tomorrow, find work? Yes. Can you find sustainable work is the question. Can you build a business? And what's cool about contracting, I think, is there's so many, or just let's call it construction in general. 
there's so many avenues you can go down, whether it's the trades, working as electrician, plumber, HVAC, whatever it may be, um, or carpenter, or having your own handyman business where you're just a guy in a truck and roll around and fix things, um, to a general contractor like us where we are, we're the contract holder for the, uh, the project, and we do some work but sub out and have our subcontractors doing most of the work to where I haven't, that's why I was about to say I haven't worked in a while, um, but I take go out, get out and take care of things, install a, a micro hood or put in a vanity when needed. Um, but for the most part, I don't work in the field anymore. Do you see yourself then becoming an investor? Yeah, um, I'll say we haven't purchased a house since 2021, um, but we're currently under contract and selling our two multifamilies. Um, and we've had feelers out there and worked on purchasing, but it's not front and center. What are you aiming for? Single family? Apparently not multifamily, right? Um, so the multifamily we have is um, two hours away, and we found oh. that that was not our cup of tea um, for the properties we purchased. Um, we thought, again, it goes back to we thought we were going to be spending a lot more time on real estate. Well, come find out where it's going to be more contracting. We didn't have the time to deal with long distance investing. But um, now, well, well, where are you transitioning now? Like, how do you plan to start? Sure. We're going to bring it here. Um, keep it local. Um, I think the for sure is finding whether it be a flip or a burr. Um, and where we, I don't think it matters whether we hold on or we just sell it. Um, for us, it'd probably just depend on the property, whatever it came across. Rinse and repeat? Rinse and repeat. How do you, how do you, then how do you see Home Life Brothers, your construction services, um, accommodating to you slowly transitioning into an, um, an active real estate investor? If it was a perfect world, it, there wouldn't be a transition that both will happen simultaneously. You know, we're putting together the processes that, um, you know, we're definitely, I mean, we're still a long ways away from this, but it, the whole goal is to build it so that one day we can just step back. And then because the processes are in place, it'll still function. The construction company will still function without us. Um, are we ever going to leave? No, for sure. Uh, but the, that's the whole goal because yeah, what if one day I need to go or for a week I need to go work on a real estate deal or, or whatever? I want that to still function. So how do they transition together? I, I think as we've put in these processes, we're going to free up a lot of our time to be able to, to focus on that. So I think that's – I guess that's the transition is letting the construction company hammer out the processes to free us up. What is real estate bringing you that construction's not? Um, the long-term growth, um, and, and it, the question is a great question because that's what we had to ask ourselves at the very beginning, which one is bringing us more? And a year ago, and even currently today, the construction is, why would I go flip a house when I can invest more back into the, you know, why would I go spend $30,000 on a down payment on a house where I can spend six months work or six months till it's sold to flip to make another $30,000 or I can reinvest back into my construction business, maybe put another van on the road, maybe uh, spend more in marketing to go expand our business and make double or triple that. So mm. that, and that's, that's the question we have to ask ourselves literally every day, especially when we're presented, you know, we're in this community, we we're presented deals all the time. It's, you know, shiny object syndrome gets us sometimes and you start going down this road and you're like, wait a minute, reel myself back. This train is running full steam why would I stop it? Or why would I get off on the slow track? So would you say building that net, that capital first before you go into more passive role? Yeah, yeah. Um, and since we started, we've had the foot on the gas. At no point have we let up on the, the Home Life Brothers contracting. At some point, there's probably going to be a... Let me pause for a second here. We're, we're, engines are humming. Let's take a breath for a second. For right now, I don't foresee that happening in the next year. Um, you know, we've got some, we set some lofty goals for this year. Um, I think with anybody who's running a business, they try to. And until we are at a comfortable spot, real estate's kind of back of the mind. It's still up there. I think about it all the time. But where I actually put my effort is in the construction and contracting. Construction in the morning, what do you see going on? 
lots of commercial uh, that hasn't changed in the last 10 years um, as far as single family homes whether we say it's retail or um, investment I think retail is never going to quit I mean you can drive down any street in the whole metro and you're going to see houses that need work there's enough work out there for a million contractors for as long as they want it's the how do you find it and make money off it that's the question um, as far as investing we've definitely seen a pullback on the number of people flip purchasing to flip or rehab um, why is that I think it's like I said back to last fall the people who set up their business models based on a low interest environment they're not failing because they have you know houses in that are cash flowing them but their ability to acquire and expand stopped survival of the fittest survival of the fittest 100 percent wow okay for the home light brothers how do how can people reach out to you if they want any projects or contracts or stuff like that sure you can give us a call anytime um go to the website the home life brothers.com um phone number my phone number no no, nah, no that. not that yeah. one they're, they're go, gonna be spamming you yeah go to, go to the home life brothers.com there's a contact us form our phone number's on there so you can figure it out that way it's pretty easy um, before, before we go three things as a contractor that you've learned that you wish you knew or that you will tell contractors that are just starting great question three things i wish i knew in other words what are three fuck-ups that contractors have done? Yep, that, that you have done or you, you, you know that. That if you knew them, it will completely change the way that you took over the entire company. I would say a simple one, and this goes for anything, um, setting your bar too low. Um, when you think your mind is limited to what you think you can accomplish, especially within contracting, if, if you think you're good enough to change out a toilet and that's all you got, I bet you could rehab an entire bathroom. I bet you could figure it out. So to think you have those limits on you, I mean, you can do anything you want. Just put, try it. Um, you know, we, we used to call it still to this day. We kind of laugh at each other and go, well, that was a learning experience because you're going to, the only way you grow is taking on those bigger projects. Um, Boy, one thing we've definitely come across in the last six months is trying to expand too rapidly. That kind of contradicts lesson number one, I guess. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's everybody here, here's the the cash flow monster within any business. Um, when you're trying to do projects that are a hundred thousand dollars, but your previous contracts were only five and ten thousand dollars, you're trying to pay for a hundred thousand dollar project with five and ten thousand dollar funds um so i think that's where a lot of contractors get into trouble you hear about the contractor who just never took my down payment and never showed up again is because he needed that down payment to pay for the last job that he screwed up and now he doesn't have the money to, to work on your project so you're not going to see him again um boy what else not not outsourcing when appropriate if, if any of you follow Calvin, he's in the same boat right now and figuring that out. It's We thought we needed to do all the work, and it was too expensive to bring in a subcontractor. The first time we did it, we had a, had a contract and let somebody else do the work for X number of dollars. We thought, boy, well, if it's a $10,000 contract and they're going to cost us eight or $9,000, we're not going to make any money. Yeah, the margin will be reduced, but they're going to be in there for a week or two. What else could you go do for those week or two? And you're going to make your money there, and you're going to go make money doing something else, and more work is getting done. So that was something we held off on a long time, was trying to do all the work ourselves. So it was don't aim, aim high enough. Yep. Don't take chew more than you can swallow. Was, yep. And then the last one was allow others be willing to subcontract or allow others to do your work for you. Delegate. Delegate. That's pretty good. Yeah. Took you a while to figure it out, but we're getting there. I don't think we'll ever figure it out, but that's the that's the whole point is to keep striving.
that's the whole goal of businesses. Yeah, for sure. Thanks, guys, for watching. If you like this episode, like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one.